Hi class, um, this is a video lecture that should be watched after you saw all those little video clips about the structure of DNA. Um, it wasn't me in those videos, but I picked really good ones from your textbook and one from YouTube and they're really short. You should have filled in the guided notes and about DNA structure so that now you can understand what our cells actually do with the DNA. Okay, so now I'm covering um, the idea of the DNA, you all know, is like our genetic material, right? And we all hear about genes. Genes are basically sections of DNA that code for certain things. And so today we're going to talk about how our cells takes the information that is housed in DNA and converts it into the traits that make us us, right? And it really all comes down to something that I've tried to lead into is that anything in our body that does anything is a protein. So actually what gives us our traits, what makes us look certain way, have certain eye color, be certain height, are all proteins. We've talked about proteins being enzymes. Proteins are also the pigments that make our eye color. Uh, proteins are also the enzymes that facilitate reactions to have us grow, um, the hormones that um, have us grow. So everything that does something in our body is a protein. So today we're covering how um, DNA has a code and eventually that becomes a protein. So this as a whole is referred to as like the central dogma of biology, the flow of genetic information. So now I'm looking at the slide here. So the flow of genetic information. So we start with DNA, and DNA is found in the nucleus of the cell. So that's the structure here in purple. DNA cannot leave the nucleus. And if you recall from the uh, work you've done already this week, DNA is a double helix. It's double-stranded. And it has this code, which is the order of those bases, A, T, G, C, G. That's the code, because if you compare my DNA code to your DNA code, it's different, right? Um, so DNA has the code, but DNA can't leave the nucleus. And that code determines the proteins that make us up. And proteins are made out here in this structure called the ribosome. All right, so somehow our cells need to take this code from our nucleus out to where the protein is made, which is in the ribosome. DNA can't leave the nucleus, so our cells require a messenger. There's the nucleus, and that messenger is going to take the code from DNA and during a process referred to as transcription, copy the code into a different nucleic acid molecule, RNA. So RNA and DNA are similar, and they're both nucleic acids. They both have bases, so they can both carry codes. They can both carry genetic information. The advantage here for transcription is that messenger RNA, mRNA, can actually leave the nucleus. So we're going to take the code from DNA, transcribe it during transcription, which just means copy. Like if you transcribe something, you're copying it. Copying it into a different type of nucleic acid, mRNA, and mRNA can then leave the nucleus. Here's the mRNA. It can go to the ribosome, and in the ribosome is where the protein is made during a process called translation. So the reason this process is called translation is because at the ribosome, we're actually converting the language. We're going from the language of a nucleic acid, the A, U, G, C, and we're converting it into the actual protein. And what facilitates that is the ribosome that is outside in the cytoplasm. So a little bit about RNA. We say that RNA is also a nucleic acid made up of the monomer nucleotides, okay? Um, DNA is what holds our genetic information, and during 
transcription, we have to convert that DNA into an RNA molecule because RNA controls the structure of a protein. So DNA in a gene determines the order of nucleotides in the RNA molecule, right? So the code in DNA is going to then be copied into the RNA molecule, and then the RNA is going to control how the protein is made. That's the order of it. So a little bit about RNA. If um, you watched all the videos about DNA, you should know that DNA is referred to as a double helix because it's made of two strands of nucleotides. <clears throat> the backbone, we call, is the phosphate sugar, and the inside are the two bases. And there was that base-bearing rule that adenine went with thymine, guanine went with cytosine. Now, RNA is similar because it's also nucleic acid. It's also a polymer made up of monomers that in this case are nucleotides. You can see here that it's actually only single-stranded. And that's one of the reasons it works as a messenger. DNA being double-stranded is too large to exit the nucleus and take the code to the ribosome itself. RNA is single-stranded, so it's smaller and it can exit the nucleus and go to the ribosome. All right, so RNA is single-stranded. It has a nucleotide composed of a phosphate sugar and a base, phosphate sugar base, but unlike DNA, which has the sugar deoxyribose, that's why it's DNA, RNA has the sugar ribose, and that's why it's RNA. Another difference between DNA and RNA is that the base thymine is replaced with uracil. So the bases in DNA were thymine, adenine, guanine, cytosine. In RNA, we have an adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil instead of thymine. It's written here. So the four types of bases in RNA are uracil, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. Uracil replaces thymine of DNA. Um, there are two types of RNA. Right now we're really only talking about the messenger RNA, the one that exits and takes the code from the nucleus and the DNA to the ribosome. In my next video, we'll be talking about transfer RNA. So the process of transcription, right, needs to occur. And I had this video, the slide in my introduction. Transcription is where the DNA is transcribed into RNA. So I'm going to ask you, where is this taking place? It's taking place in the nucleus, right? Because that's the point of transcription. It's taking the code from the DNA into a messenger RNA, the messenger RNA can exit the nucleus and go to the ribosome. So in this picture here, you see that, you see up here how that DNA is that double helix where the bases are in the middle, C goes with G, T goes with A, that's the base pairing rule. So during transcription, that double helix is opened up. It kind of unwinds in a region. That's the region that we wanna make the protein from. And from there, do you see this other strand? This is your messenger RNA transcript. So that messenger RNA is really copying the code from the DNA. Do you see how the DNA has T? The RNA puts the uh, A nucleotide there. If the DNA has G, the RNA puts the C. That's the base pairing rule. And you can tell that this RNA is almost exactly like the other strand of the DNA, right? Except that if the DNA is A, the RNA can't put T because there is no T, so it puts the U, right? So this is why we say that during transcription, the RNA is really just copying the code from the DNA, right? And how does it copy it? because of that base pairing rule. Because if it just opens up the DNA and uses one strand as a template, right, it can take that strand and make the complementary bases on the RNA, and it's basically the same code as the DNA. 
Once it's copied the code by using the base pairing rule, it can detach and then this RNA will go out of the nucleus. So why does transcription need to occur? Because the DNA can't exit the nucleus. Right? Um, I wrote DNA can't leave the nucleus, but it has the code for how to make proteins. What is the final product of transcription? That messenger RNA molecule. And where is this messenger RNA going? It's going to exit the nucleus and go to the ribosome. Okay. So this is just my summary slide for transcription, right? So we had the nucleus, you have your double-stranded DNA, your double helix that has your genetic code. It, the code is found in the nucleotide bases, right? The order of those bases with adenine, thymine, guanine, every order for every organism is different. And that is the code that tells the cell what to do, what to make, which actually determines your physical traits. That code is converted into an mRNA strand by opening up the DNA, and that RNA single strand is made by using the complementary basis from the DNA, so the code doesn't change. Then that messenger RNA can leave the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm where the ribosome is, and in the ribosome, this is what we're gonna learn in the next video, the ribosome reads that code and converts it into these, this little strand of protein.